Hello, this is Hui. Welcome to watch my video C++ Programming on Linux. In this short video, we continue discuss Protocol Buffers C++ library. In previous video, we demonstrated and discussed how to use in Protocol Buffers C++ library arena. In this short video, we are going to demonstrate how to use in Protocol Buffer C++ library, the message. So what is a Protocol Buffer message? The Protocol Buffer message is an interface or structured date defines the method that lets you check, manipulate, read, or write the entire message, include a parsing from and serializing to the binary strings. So how to use this Protocol Buffer message? There's a simple four steps. First is to create a message, structure the date, which is a dot proto files. Second, using protocol compiler to compile, generate C++ object files. And the third one is to write API using the message object. Fourth is edit a make file to compile APIs. So let's do in the first step, create a message structured data dot proto files. Here is our simple proto file we call the order dot prot, which is our purchase order structured data. So for this purchase order, we have order, which is the header. We simply define three column, which is number one is order ID, it's integer. We define as a required. Second one is the vendor, and which is the column two. Type is a string. We define as optional and required, which is the date must have. Optional, which is this date may or may not have. And the third one is other item, which is repeated. It's called item, which is number three. For the other item, which we have item code, we define as a required integer. And item description is a string uh, optional. And item quantity is order quantity, which is required. And item price is optional. So we just created this simple purchase order structured data. This is called our message. Step two, which is the prod compile. Here, the proto buffer compiler produces C++ output when you walk with the flag cpp underscore out, which this compiler will generate .pb.h and .pb.cc, which is the header and the implementation files. So here on the our other terminal, we have this our order .prod file to compiling. And the, the, our flag is minus cpp underscore out equal. It's a directory, which just put to current directory. And our prod file is other prod. You can see after we compiled, when we generate the other.pb.h, other.pb.cc. So this is a prod compiler generated, which is a class of our purchase namespace and uh, our order item, which is the order item class and our order class. There's a lot of method. Generally, we don't touch this program at all. Otherwise, it will cause lots of problem. This is the implementation files for the purchase namespace and uh, purchase order. We have a lot of method. Generally, we don't touch this at all. So after that, we create our application and the right API to use the message object. Here we create a simple program, write PO. We just hard coding, generate a PO, which is my order, purchase order. And we just put a date, ID, wonder, and the item. Add item one, hot coffee, quantity two, price 2.85. And add item two, which is a hot cappuccino, quantity order one, price is three dot forty-five. And add item three, which is five oh three, hot tea three, uh, quantity three, price two point five. This, which we have to include, proto compiler generated the header file, which order dot pb dot h. 
So all the method for the purchase order, purchase order item will be defined like a set value, get value, all this is there. So we just use a set ID, set vendor, set code, set uh, description, set quantity, and set price. And add item to the purchase order. After that, we just create a serialized file we call the OFS stream, which is output file and the file name get from command line and this file will be output and uh, we just trunk each time we create and uh, it's a binary files. Here we just uh, say proto buffer class and the method write and reading message of your chosen type using protocol buffer binary format. This serialized data structure is a binary format. So we use the serialized to stream which is to the file and we can also use and create a string using serialized to string to convert our structured data into the binary string, we call it byte string. So we can also parse from I stream, which is we can read from input file, parse into our purchase order object. So it just create our object, which is called my order, and we my using my order serialized to O stream, which is output files. And after that, we create another program called read PO, read from input file, which is our serialized structured data files. We open this file or instantialize the object we call the input, which is input file, read only file, binary file, and we instantialize our purchase order, we call the my order. So we use my order parse from iStream, which input the file, which load structured data into our my object. And after that, we can print out ID, and our object has a wonder, and our object has items, which we make a simple loop. Each loop, we print out item code, item description, item quantity, item price. So we can see how we parse from this file. So now let's go to other terminal. So our make file, on our compiling flag, we have included the directory where is the header file located. It's depending on where you installed on your system. And also RD flags, we have to indicate the library where is the prod buffer library located. So we have to compile our order.pb.cc into an order.pb.o object file. This is generated from the proto compiler. So for our write PO, and we have to write PO.cpp, we generate a write PO.o file using C flag, and we using both our write PO.object and other PB.object. Both two files generate our executable write PO. Similar for the read PO, which we need to use both object of read PO and the other PB.O, which this was generated from proto compiler to build our executable. We compile both write PO and the read PO. Now we compiled, so we got our executable write PO and the read PO. So our write PO, which is a hard code to generate the purchase order from Starbucks coffee, and we write into the file, we call it my.dat. So you can see we create mycoffee.dat. It is a binary file. So to check my binary file, we can use the X converter to a .txt files. So this is our binary file, which is uh, our my other Starbucks other files. And now we, we can use our read PO, and it's my coffee.dat. So you can see my program read parse from my coffee.dat. We got a order ID 1001 and the wonder name Starbucks Toronto. We have uh, three items. It's uh, 501 hot coffee. We order two. And each is 2.85. And other item two, it's a hot cappuccino. We order one, price is 3.45. And item three, which is a hot tea, and the quantity is three, and 2.55. Exactly 
This is what we hard coded in our write PO.program. In previous video, we made an example. We can use an XML file, which is very, very popular recent days. Why we are going to use serialized structure data message, you can see, which is a binary. So the advantage of serialized structure data message, you can see our file is shorter. We have a 120 by for this hot coffee and other structure data. If similar data, we try to use an XML, which you can see the size is 437, which is a three and a half times bigger than our binary data files. So if our processing for large, huge volume data transactions, and we using the binary structure data, it's shorter and the process is faster. So the advantage using proto buffer message structure data, which is high performance. Hello, this is Hui. Thanks to watch my video. Hopefully this is useful, enjoyable. It's going to be great to have your feedback.